Today I'm here to, de to debate that China's rise is beneficial to U.S.'s interests. And I have three contentions. My first contention is that the pursuit of U.S. Hegem uh, oh, that the hegemony of the U.S. is bad. Pursuit of the U.S. hegemony harms national security. It hits, hurts our economy, creates enemies faster than it slays them, discourages allies from sharing the burden, and causes counterbalance against the U.S. A policy of restraint is better. Um, by prof Professor Pauli Sai. Who? What professor? Uh, What's his uh, name? Pauli Sai. Before that. Paulson. Paulson. Yep. Hey. Okay. Did you memorize? Now read the My information. Second. No, read the quote. Uh, oh. Okay. You're about to do what she just did. Okay. Just, just as emerging powers have gotten stronger, so too have the small, oh, have the small states and violent sub-state entities that the United States have attempted to discipline, democratize, or eliminate. Whether it's Somalia, Serbia, Afghanistan, Iraq, or Libya, the United States military seems to find itself fighting enemies that prove tougher than expected. My second contention. Oh. My second contention is that. No, this is the first condition. In pursuit of an ambitious agenda, the United States have consistently spent hundreds of billions of dollars per year on its military, far more than the sum of defense budgets of its friends, and far more than the sum of those of its potential adversaries. And it's kept the military busy. U.S. troops have spent roughly twice as many months in combat after the Cold War as they, as they did during it. Roughly um, 10,000 100,800 U.S. citizens remain stationed of, on foreign soil, not counting the tens of thousands more who have rotated through the war zones in Afghanistan and Iraq. Thousands of American and Allied soldiers have lost their lives, not to mention the countless civilians caught in the crossfire. Okay, now moving on to our second condition. U.S. hegemony causes soft and hard imbalancing. Paulson Park by Professor Pauli Sai. Ironically, however, instead of relying on these inherited advantages for its security, the United States has oh, has acted with a profound sense of insecurity, adopted an unnecessary militarized and forward-leaning foreign policy. The strategy has generated predictable pushback. Since the 1990s, rivals have restored to what scholars call soft fallacy low-grade diplomatic opposition. China and Russia regularly use the rules of liberal international institutes to delegitimize the United States' actions. In the UN Security Council, they wielded their veto to deny the West resolution supporting the bombing campaign in Kosovo in 1999, and the invasion of Iraq in 2003. And most recently, they have slowed the effort to isolate Syria. They occasionally work together with their venues, too, such as the Shanghai Cooperation Organization. American activism, activism has also generated harder forms of bouncy. China has worked assiduously to improve its military, and Russia has solid it modern, sold its modern weapons, such as... Uh, Time. Fire. Crossfire. Okay. Rebecca, first question. Over that slip, slip, go. You said that U.S. hegemony is bad, but um, what do you think of the fact that U.S. hegemony has uh, maintained peace in the region? Oh. Um. Um. But according to my first contention, the pursuit of U.S. hegemony harms national security. There's other economies and transferred other countries as well. So, um, um, so what do you think, um, how do you think China is affecting U.S. security? Uh, <clears throat> You 
because China's China's rise would automatically would would uh, bring more power to their military, and they would want more strength. So they will take over some of what the U.S. has. So that challenge is U.S. But then the US is no, you don't get two questions in a row. Rebecca, ask a question. Time. 